and we'll make this a really nice little tail. Now, the trick is, now that I've glued it, I want to lay it all the way back. And the reason I do is I don't want it to have a really stark profile. I don't want it to climb out really hard. And then I want to just make some final tweaks on it to make sure it's kind of uh, adjusted in the right way. See that? So that this sits pretty much level. That's actually not that important for this aircraft because it won't be taking off on this. It'll just be so when it glides to the ground, it acts properly and lands on this. Now look how strong that is. Nice and resilient. And now we have BAMO. Slamo, a completed biplane that is ready for RC gear. It's braced in all the right areas. Now I can already see that these are not perfect, and I can see that here, but they're not that bad, but they're really not that good. This needs to come up just a little tiny bit and get a tiny bit more glue in here so that I can reset it. Don't be afraid to do stuff like this, guys. This is a great material for this. And it will allow you to do it right. So I'm going to lean this pretty heavily up here. But, but it's because I just applied the glue. And now I'm going to look at it real careful. And bring it down a little. Just enough to match the other one. And it's still got a pretty big angle. Like that. And this is a real flying angle guys. When you see them like this. This one needs to be angled up a little bit. But they should both be angled slightly leaned out both in terms of their spread apart, in terms of their toe and camber, you want them to be pretty level. You want them to be straight. But I also want them to be slightly leaned out a little bit here. Okay? So that you want them riding on the inner edges so that as this works, they flatten out. And this is what will be happening, which is why it needs one more brace. We made a little shelf here. I showed you that already. And now I'm going to show you why we made it because we are going to put a brace across there and that will be the final bit of bracing for this aircraft because after this it will need no more but we're going to make this a really stiff brace because this is the one that will take the most pounding now obviously this is the kind of thing where you really ought to measure guys this is why i always tell you you should measure now sometimes you can take a, an eye measurement and i know that that's going to be good enough Because it's going to be long enough. And as long as I know that, I can trim it and then set it in place where I want it. And believe it or not, that's exactly where I want it, guys. To hold that in. But no, I want it just a little above that. I actually want it sitting on my little shelf here. Which means I need to trim a little off each side. And it helps if you try and get your angles perfect while you're trimming. So that you can actually trim this. And get it perfect because it's always harder to do than you might think at first see that still too long but like i said it's always better to start too long and work your way in because you'll find you get a nice snug fit when you do it this way guys now look at the fit i just got tell me that's not perfect you guys so now that i know we've got this perfect fit and it's snug like snug enough i could just leave it there and fly with it guys which is epic and this final brace, just like on my other plane, will lock this in so snug and so nice, guys. It'll hold my landing gear at exactly the same length apart and exactly the same angle. Tell me that doesn't look perfect to you. Now, all I've got to do is angle this wing slightly, ever so slightly up, so that it is gaining in downforce department instead of just adding weight. It's got more downforce because I just did that. More structural strength. The landing gear is going to be much tougher. And now it's actually finished. That was the last final touch. And it's perfect. And you can see the symmetry here. These are very similar designs, guys. Very similar designs. In fact, you could almost say that this is the little version, except it's a totally different wing. All I've done is copy my landing gear because I really liked it. But this will show you. If I wanted to copy it, I could. I'm not looking to do that. I don't want to copy it. I wanted a good, strong landing gear, but I also wanted a totally different wing because I'm building a series. And I'm going to build this series. And you guys can come along and build with me. My name is Keith Daniel Robinson. And this CG is absolutely perfect, you guys. Like flawless. 
And because I added weight equally, and this gives lift, not only does it CG, but I added lift to the plane. This creates lift, have no doubt. These create lift, have no doubt. So does this, and so does this, and so do these. They also help the plane when it's flying in on knife edge. All of these little pieces are going to be what holds it in when it flies knife edge, including the two in the tail. But this is meant to be an ultimate 3D biplane, just like this. Only I wanted it to be smaller. I wanted it to be a straight edge wing. I wanted a whole bunch of different things. And I had an idea for a completely different aircraft, and it is done. So I'm going to leave you guys here, and I hope that you enjoy your build. I hope that you enjoy your flights. And I hope that you build every single plane that you ever build as a glider first so you can see how good a design you really have, guys. Because now, this is looking perfect, guys. This is looking epic. And I love it. My landing gear is great. And uh, I'm feeling really excited about it. So, uh, that's it for this one. I love you guys, man. Enjoy your builds. And uh, don't forget... I still have some great aircraft coming. In fact, this is just the beginning. This is my first aircraft in my 6-inch series. It's called the Straight Shot. This is my first aircraft in my 12-inch series. And it's called the Eagle, for obvious reasons. It even looks like feathers when the flaps are up. It's such a nice plane. It's got a really good tail that functions really well. And they're very similar if you look at the profiles from the side. These are almost identical rear ends, guys. They're just different. So, the wings, however, are totally and utterly different. And you will see that they fly very different. This will actually be the faster airplane with lower resistance. And this one isn't designed for speed. It's designed to be the ultimate slow-flying 3D biplane. This is just playing the ultimate small biplane, period. There's nothing, this is, will be incredibly fast when you want it to be. It might not be a beginner build. I don't know, I'll have to see, because it's got a really fast roll rate, and it's got everything going on to be a brilliant 3D biplane, and very fast for its size, very locked in in the wind. This one does, but it's got such heavy VGs that it gets crazy lift and is amazing at slow flying, but it'll limit the top speed of the aircraft. That's okay, that's what it was designed for. This will fly with a really small motor and a really weak battery, so I'm not worried about limiting the top speed. That being said, this will be an outdoor aircraft, and I don't want it to be too crazy, but I want it to achieve good speed, and this is actually a good speed design. Um, and the combination of the fact that it has so much uh, lift and so much weight carrying ability and will be locked into the wind because it can be heavier... I can make it lock into the wind a lot smoother, guys. This will be such a nice airplane to fly. Anyway, this is a really long video, guys. This is uh, the final build on my straight shot until we put our C gear in it. It is now completed. This is your completed straight shot, guys. Enjoy it. Keith out.